What does your body feel like in zero gravity? What inspires you to become an astronaut? What exercise do you do? And do you sweat in space? What do yo-yo work in microgravity? So it works. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ooh, station is ready for the event. Stennis Space Center, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Stennis Space Center. How do you hear me? Stennis Space Center, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Hear you loud and clear. Hello, astronaut Ricky Arnold. I'm Kelly Martin Rivers, Education Director here at Stennis Space Center, and we'd like to welcome you to Stennis, the Infinity Science Center in Hancock County, Mississippi. Special greetings to our guests, Wynn Ellington from Senator Hyde Smith's office, Andrew Heikenbang from Senator Wicker's office, and Freddie Douglas, Director of Safety and Mission Insurance here at uh, Stennis Space Center. We're joining you with over 400 HEO Astro Campers here at Infinity. Over 500 campers doing watch parties across Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama, and take our children to work day at Stennis Space Center. We are happy to be here with you today, and we're going to get started with these wonderful questions. Ms. Maria Lott, Director of AstroCamp. Hello, and our first question is... Hi, my name is Ani from Infinity Science Center Astro Camp. How long did you have to train to go to space? I, well, for this mission specifically, I trained for a little over a year. Um, but uh, w when we first arrive at NASA, we go to astronaut school for for about two years, which gets us uh, prepared to be assigned for a mission. And then once we're assigned, we kind of go back to school to get ready. Uh, but we are always training and learning new things at work. Uh, it's it's a, con a job that c has constant learning required. Okay. Hi, my name is Emerald from the HEO Astro Camp Boomville Boys and Girls Club. Do you have a daily routine? What is it and does it ever change? It, it changes all the time, and yet sometimes it seems the same. Um, our daily routine is actually controlled by, by people in the on the ground. And so we wake up in the morning. Actually, the night before, we'll look at our plan. Uh, we all wake up around the same time. We have breakfast. Then we have a little conference over the radios, and then we get to work. And within that work day, every day it's something different. We're either working on a science, a science experiment. We're cleaning, maintaining the space station. Sometimes we have visiting vehicles that bring up cargo and we're packing stuff and unpacking stuff. So it's a very exciting place to work. Also within our work day that's scheduled for us, we have, uh, we have time, we have lunch together usually, and uh, we all exercise for about two hours every day. Hi, my name is Preston Warren from the HEO Astro Camp Torbotics. Do you still use the robotic arm that built the space station? We sure do. We have uh, two robotic arms and another uh, d robotic device that attaches to the end of the robotic arm, and we use them all the time. In fact, they're frequently controlled from the ground. Um, right behind me, uh, there's a, a JAXA robotic arm, which is used for moving around experiments outside. We have the big station robotic arm, which you're probably referring to, and then there's an attachment called Dexter, which can attach to the space station robotic arm and can actually go out and make repairs and, and, mo and do things for us on the outside of the space station. And I got to fly the robotic arm about a week and a half ago and actually capture a spaceship that arrived, uh, arrived carrying cargo, and that was a pretty exciting morning. Hi, my name is Madison from the Infinity Science Center Astro Camp. How long do you have to exercise in space each day, and is it hard? 
just like on Earth, you're, we need to exercise uh, on the space station every single day, and we do. We do about an hour of uh, cardio exercise. We have a treadmill, and uh, we have a, an exercise bicycle, which we use to kind of get our heart moving and our blood flowing. Um, and then we also have a, we can lift anything up here. It's uh, in a microgravity environment. So we have a special machine that allows us to uh, kind of do the same exercise we do, would do lifting weights on the ground, but up here in, in microgravity. Um, and that pl is planned for us on the ground. So sometimes it is pretty hard. You, we run intervals on a treadmill and uh, so, you know, the weights continually increase while we're here in training. So uh, sometimes it can be hard work, but it's, uh, it's also one of the more fun parts of the day. Hi, my name is Landon from the Boys and Girls Club of Boonville, representing uh, the HEO Astro Camp IP Center Boys and Girls Club. What is your favorite thing to do in on the ISS? It's a pretty exciting place, but by far my favorite thing to do is to uh, sit down, and, uh, go down to the cupola, and sit and look at at the beautiful Earth below us. Um, that is something uh, that just never uh, gets old, and um, in, we're really busy up here, and sometimes it's hard to find the time to do it, but that is by far my favorite thing to do up here. Hi, my name is Caroline from the Infinity Science Center Astro Camp. Do you have animals or insects on the ISS, and could a fish swim in a water bubble biosphere in space? We, uh, we frequently have, uh, have animals uh, on the space station. Uh, right now, we even have, uh, I th we have some bees, we have some uh, mice. Um, we have, of course, we have bacteria and all the other stuff that, that can grow up here because humans are here. Uh, we have some flatworms that I did an experiment on uh, the other day. So we always, and even some brine shrimp. There's someone uh, growing some brine shrimp that I was working on that project the other day. Fish, yes, they could swim in a bubble. We've had them here before. We don't have any right now, unfortunately. Um, but what's interesting, uh, like a lot of other animals, including us, uh, they have trouble figuring out. We rely on gravity to figure out which way is up and which way is down. So they tend to have trouble figuring out how to orient themselves and end up kind of swimming around in circles. Hi, my name is Leah from the Heo Astro Camp of Southeastern Rec Center. What is the most challenging thing for you living and moving in microgravity on the ISS? Keeping track of your stuff is by far the most challenging thing. I think the first month I was here, and even though I've been up here before and was prepared for it, or at least I thought I was prepared for it, anything you set down is going to go away. And uh, it's just really hard keeping track of your things. Um, having less up here is, is a real benefit and makes life, <laughs> makes life a lot easier. Hi, my name is Brody from SSC Astro Camp, representing the Children's Museum of St. Tammy HEO Astro Camp. Does the Cartesian dive react the same on the ISS as it did in the NEMA training video on pressure? That was a really interesting question. I was thinking about. It. I was doing a. Uh, I'm doing a thing for NASA Education, um, an experiment with oil and water. And uh, like on Earth, when you mix oil and water, oil will flow on top of the water, A, because they don't like to mix, and B, because the oil is less dense than water. And so when you put them in a glass, the oil will go on top or the, and the water will go on bottom. But if you turn the glass upside down, they'll stay in the same orientation because density doesn't matter up here in a microgravity environment. So for a Cartesian diver, um, I think squeezing on the bottle, it it would probably move from the force of the squeeze, but it would not be predictable as on Earth, where uh, as you change the density of the Cartes Cartesian diver, um, it, it knows you could predict where it's going to move in the water column. Here, you wouldn't be able to predict that. Hi, my name is Kara from SSC Astro Camp, representing the Forest Heights Center Boys and Girls Club here at Astro Camp. What is the heaviest thing you have lifted in space, and how happy they actually feel to your muscles? So that's a really interesting question. I, I, I don't know what the heaviest thing I've lifted because we have some payloads. I'm looking at some behind the camera here that could weigh hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds that I would not be able to lift, lift on Earth in any way, shape, or form. Um, uh, but you don't notice it here, and it's not hard on your muscles to do. But what is hard 
is if you're carrying something heavy and you start moving, um, you've kind of taken that load on with your body and, um, and it's really hard to control yourself and you can run into something, something really hard as Isaac Newton tells us. Um, the force with which you will hit something is a function of how fast you're going and how, how much mass you have. So you have a really heavy object that's really easy to, to lift um, but it's really hard to move with because you really have difficulty controlling where you're going and more importantly, how you're going to stop. Hi, my name is Angel from SSC Astro Camp, representing the, Vic the Vicksburg Warren School District Heo Astro Camp. Do you have an adrenaline rush when you launch into space? And does gravity hurt your back when you return from space? I think uh, every astronaut will tell you that uh, launching on a rocket is one of the coolest, most exciting parts about our job. So, yeah, you definitely have an adrenaline rush. The whole build-up to launch is a, is a really exciting uh, is a really exciting couple of days. Um, and then as the minutes get closer to launch, it just the, the excitement builds. So, yeah, and then the actual eight and a half minute ride is um, the wildest roller coaster roller coaster you can imagine. Um, the uh, Return, um, when I came back last time, it was a shorter mission, so I did not have any back issues, and I also landed on a, in the space shuttle, which was landing on a runway. Um, I'm going to be up here for about seven months on this mission, and from what I've heard people returning, uh, it takes a little while for your back to adjust getting back to Earth after a long stay up here. Hi, my name is Reese from the HERO. Astro Camps into Creativity, what has been your favorite and least favorite food to eat in space? A lot, a lot like on Earth, uh, my, my favorite foods are the things that we, that we really miss, like fresh fruit, uh, and we don't get very often. So when we're lucky and get some fresh fruit that arrives or some ice cream, something that's really cold, um, that is always a, a huge treat. Uh, the rest of the food is tasty, but even with 100 menu items or whatever we have, if you're up here for 200 days, you're going to end up eating everything several times, and, um, and so it can get a little old after a while. Uh, I think this is what's for dinner tonight. This is some of the dehydrated food we have. This is actually chicken, believe it or not. We'll add water to it and let it warm up, and, um, and it's pretty tasty. Uh, but uh, the thing I miss the most are the are the probably the fresh fruits and vegetables that you get the, we take for granted on Earth. Hi, my name is Wesley from the Infinity Science Center, Center Astro Camp. Are you concerned with particle radiation and gamma rays giving you any health problems? Uh, sure am. That is a uh, radiation from the sun and from the background radiation from from. The universe is uh, the, soul, uh, the the galaxy is one of the things that we are very concerned about. Fortunately, on the space station, um, we we are still within the Earth's magnetic field, and so that provides a lot of protection protection for us. But we will get exposed to more radiation up here than than we will on Earth. And but that's one of the reasons we're here is to learn what the long-term effects of radiation are. So when we go out beyond the Earth's magnetic field to go to the Moon, Mars, and other places in the solar system, uh, we want to understand in uh, what what the what what can happen, and we also want to develop technology to help protect people who are going to make those journeys. Hopefully, people like you. Hi, my name is Isabella from the Heo Astro Camp to Robotics. Do you use any robots to help you work on the ISS? Uh, we could not uh, keep the space station operating without our, our Canada arm, our large robotic arm. We use it uh, for moving big pieces of hardware around outside the space station. I've actually been on the robotic arm and had myself flown around on it. Um, and we use it to grapple any vehicle that brings cargo up uh, to, the U to the U.S. side of the space station. So we use robotics all the time, and there will be definitely a partnership with robotics as we go out further into the solar system, humans and robots working together. Hi, my name is Ryan from SSC Astro Camp, representing the Hammond Recreation Department's HEO Astro Camp. Does your body have to make adjustments to the microgravity? Does your nose run? 
Yeah, we do undergo changes up here. Our, our spinal cord stretches just a little bit. Mine prob I probably grew maybe a half, three quarters of an inch, which I will shrink as soon as I land and get back to Earth's gravity. Um, one of the interesting things that happens is our body's mostly made of fluid. And, and walking around on Earth, the fluid tends to accumulate down in our legs and towards our feet. But up here in microgravity, it can redistribute within the body. And you're right, one of the things we deal with sometimes is congestion. Uh, sometimes it fe you can feel the pressure in your head from, uh, from the fluids shifting back up toward your head. And that has some, maybe some long-term impl implications, and we're trying to understand what, what, the, what those effects exactly are. Hi, my name is Natalie from SSE Asher Camp, presenting the Mississippi Children's Museum in Jackson, Mississippi. Heo Asher Camp. Have you ever made a mistake in space? Yeah, we, we're human and we make mistakes all the time up here. I make mistakes uh, all the time. We, we try really hard not to, um, and the ground tries really hard to help us uh, help avoid making mistakes, but it's just the nature uh, nature of being human is you're you're gonna you're gonna fail sometimes, and you just need to learn to kind of admit your mistakes, um, learn from them, and and move on. And it just like you just like you do on Earth, uh, things aren't always going to go perfectly. But you you just try to limit the amount of times that you you, you make a mistake and and learn to uh, learn what's the lesson you need to learn and how do you how do you move on from there. Hi, my name is Bradley from SSC Astrocamp, representing the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center, HEO Astrocamp. Do you get news, and can you watch your favorite TV shows in space? We do get news, and we do get to watch TV shows. I, I, we don't really have a lot of time for watching TV shows, sometimes on the weekends, and when I'm exercising, I'll watch TV shows. But our news is usually like a day, maybe a day and a half old, so... Uh, we do kind of kind of have trouble keeping track of uh, of what's going on in the world at, at times, just because we're busy. And by the time we get to the news, it's a little bit late. If there's something important we need to know, the ground is really good. Mission control is really good about letting us know. Uh, but by and large, um, we just uh, will watch the news like like you guys do on the ground. But uh, the, sh the shows and the news are just a little bit old. Hi, my name is Cole from the HEO Astrocamp Center Creativity. Do you feel heat in your vehicle while returning to Earth from the friction in the atmosphere? Yeah, we generate a lot of heat coming back from we're, from the uh, from orbit to Earth. We're, when we're up here, we have a whole lot of kinetic energy because we're going around, we're moving, and we got to get rid of all that all of that energy. And the way we do it is by generating friction to slow the vehicle down and just get rid of that energy through friction, uh, using the Earth's atmosphere to generate that friction. So the outside of a spaceship gets really, really hot. Uh, my landing on the space shuttle, I do not remember uh, feeling uh, feeling any warmer uh, on the inside, but on the outside, it was uh, incredibly hot. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to tell you after the Soyuz, my, from what I hear from my friends who have flown on a Soyuz, which is a capsule, which will come through the Earth's atmosphere, but much smaller. Um, uh, from what I understand, yeah, it'll get, it'll get a, little, a little toasty inside. Hi, my name is Kyson from the HEO Astro Camp Boomville Boys and Girl Club. What and when was your first EVA assignment? So an EVA is a spacewalk, and we go out and do spacewalks to uh, repair the space station and also to make improvements to it. And uh, my first spacewalk, or my first EVA, was back in 2009 on my first mission. And our job was we basically took a, a piece of hardware that was about the size of a school bus um, and had been grappled and held onto by our robotic arm and moved into position. And we went out onto the space station and helped attach it. And on that big piece of hardware were the solar arrays that uh, provided, the, provided the energy to take the space station to a full crew of six people. So that was my, my first EVA. Hi. My name is Jasmine from the HEO Astro Camp, Southeastern Rec Center. Could you use an inverted magnetic field to protect the ISS from asteroids and meteors? It's an interesting question. I've been thinking about that a lot, Jasmine. Um, and one of the one of the using using an inverted magnetic field. 
Well, I think one of the challenges would be that generating a magnetic field requires energy, and you know, energy is one of those things that uh, is very valuable to us. So our focus right now is on materials. Uh, the uh, space station has protection on the outside to uh, help protect us from micrometeorites, which are the little small pieces of orbital debris. I think there's somewhere around a, you know, half a million of them out there that, the, that we can currently track. Um, big things like a, an asteroid and a meteorite, uh, we can actually see those coming and ha have the ability to move the space station to get out of the way. So we focus on tracking what's out there. We can move to avoid it. And, and then for the smaller things we can't track or we can't get out of the way, we, we re rely on materials to, to help protect the outside of the space station and the people living inside. Hi, my name is Kennedy from the HEO Astro Camp Central Creativity. What do you miss the most? The, what do you miss most about Earth right now? A couple of things. Uh, the first one is my family, of course. I, I miss them a lot. I left. Uh, I left the United States on February second and won't be home until October. So it's a it's a pretty long stay away from your family. The second thing, and you're probably going to have trouble believing this in Mississippi um, in, over at Status, because I know what the weather is like right there now. It's a lot like it is in Houston. But even with knowing what it's like, I still miss the weather an incredible amount up here. Every day is kind of the same weather-wise. We can see the weather down on the earth, but there's something about hearing it, feeling it, and, uh, and, and, and even smelling it is uh, um, something you really miss up here. Well, astronaut Ricky, it's rained seven days straight here at Stennis Space Center in southern Mississippi. So if you miss that, um, okay. <laughs> we want to thank you for your time. We want to thank the HEO Human Exploration and Observation Mission Directorate for sponsoring all 55 of our astro camps across the Gulf Coast and across southern Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, and in Georgia. And we're looking forward to doing this again next year. Thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Wonderful questions from the Astro Campers. I'm excited to see you spending your summer doing something just so awesome. Wishing you all the best uh, for the rest of the summer and for the new school year. So long. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from Stennis Space Center and all the Astro Campers. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication. Ricky. Uh, on three, we have a, uh, a checkout we'd like you to help us with if you have a moment. 